good afternoon all my voice is audible sachin my voice is audible yes sir okay so during this lecture so we are going to see next two types of gearbox that is constant mesh and the synchro mesh gearbox so screen is visible yes sir yes sir okay so before that i would like to revise so whatever we have studied during last lecture so units of transmission system that we have seen which consist clutch assembly clutch unit in that clutch assembly and or fluid coupling then transmission units which include gearbox transfer case overdrive freewheeling device and torque converter then drive line unit which consist of propeller shaft universal joint sprocket and chains and finally which is used to rotate the wheels to make it self propel that is drive axle units so that consist of final drive differential and half shafts okay so this already we have seen what is gearbox so it is a device which is used to change the speed or to vary the torque or simply it is speed and torque changing device between engine and the driving wheels then functions of gearbox first one is to exchange engine power to get more torque so to have mechanical advantage then to exchange power exchange power for forward motion and the reverse motion and to provide neutral position to disallow power flow to rest of power train okay then we have seen types of gearbox first one is selective type in that sliding mesh constant mesh and the synchro mesh so here every time we need to select gears just by moving gear lever first for the neutral and then by selecting the required gear then second type that is progressive type so whatever uh, in the bikes so first gear then second gear then third gear then fourth gear and the neutral or neutral first second and third so we are not going to uh, we are not allowed to select directly the third gear so if you want to put transmission in the third gear we need to go for first second third and if fourth for the fourth one like that progressive action is there in case of the progressive type of gearbox and finally the third one that is epicyclic or planetary gearbox which are used in the automatic transmission so here you can see exact meaning of the selective type so it is the transmission in which any speed may be selected from the neutral position so every time we need to go for the neutral and a particular gear is selected so in this neutral position has to be obtained before selecting any forward or reverse speed so this is the thing related to this selective type so what are the advantages simple in construction relatively free from troubles light and small low production cost okay what are the disadvantages so noisy in operation so as we need to go for the selection then gear ratios we are not going to get in steps of 3 to 
make it, making it necessary to shift the gear each time when vehicle is in running condition. Okay. Then first type of gearbox that we have seen that is sliding mesh gearbox. So screen is visible, Sachin? Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. So I have added some of the additional slides. So though a revision is taken, so you should know that in case of the gearbox, how many shafts are there? There is one plus shaft, there is one lay shaft, and there is one main shaft. And what are the other components of the gearbox, which includes fixed gear, movable gear, idler gear, clutch gear, and the gear lever. So again, the clutch shaft. So what is the first component? That is the clutch shaft. So you can see this, this diagram. So here you can check, this one is the clutch shaft. This is counter shaft or lay shaft, and this is the main shaft. Now this terminology, you can see the clutch shaft. What is the clutch shaft? The clutch shaft is used to transmit the power from engine when the clutch is in engaged position. So whenever there is, connect, there is connection between the flywheel and the friction plate, the power is transmitted from engine to the clutch. And when the clutch shaft is rotating the clutch gear, which is attached to the end of it, end of it will also going to rotate along with the clutch shaft. So you can see this. This is the clutch gear and this one is the clutch shaft. So you can check this figure as well. So this is the clutch shaft. So it is also called as primary shaft. So it is splined to clutch and supported at unseen engine site by spigot bearing in the crank. So this clutch shaft is supported. So million screen is visible? Yes, sir. So because such types of questions will be there. So this clutch shaft is supported at unseen engine side by spigot, supported at unseen engine side by spigot bearing in crank. So just, I will show that why these things are important. Okay. Can you see here bearing? This is the clutch shaft, one example. Million, can you see here pairing? Yes. And this one is the flywheel. So this is the pairing which support the clutch shaft. Okay. Then you can see the lay shaft. So this is the lay shaft. Lay shaft held stationary in the casing. So this one is supported by this casing, this hatched line. That is the casing, or you can call it as a body of the gearbox. And this clutch gear is in mesh with gears on lay shaft and here bearing is provided. So here you can see lay shaft gear cluster bearing. So what type of bearing? Here it is, light duty, plane bearing, heavy duty, roller bearing. So for light duty, plane bearing is used, for heavy duty, roller bearing is used. So this is additional image I got through internet, so that's why I have added it. So clutch shaft we have seen, then this one is the lay shaft on which there are various gears. So what is the lay shaft? The lay shaft is an intermediate shaft between the clutch shaft and the main shaft 
which provides meshing of fixed gears to movable gears to provide output appropriately. So this is the clutch gear, which is having power, which is having rotation. Those are transmitted to the gears on the lay shaft. And now because of that, these gears are going to be rotated. And once these gears are in mesh with the gear on the main shaft, or one gear on the main shaft is in mesh with the one gear on the lay shaft, that particular torque ratio is provided to the main shaft. So you can see this. This one is the lay shaft on which there are various gears. So lay shaft gear cluster rotate on fixed lay shaft. So this is the fixed lay shaft on which all these gears are rotating with the same speed as these are supported by the bearing. You can see here. So this one is the counter shaft or the lay shaft. Again, in the simplified diagram, this is the counter shaft. This one is the clutch shaft and this is the main shaft. So <coughs> this is about the lay shaft. Now, what is the main shaft? This shaft act as an output shaft for the transmission of power from engine shaft via lay shaft. So you can see this. This is the main shaft. This one is the, this is called as the main shaft. You can see what is written here. Main shaft rotates on bearing and splined to the main shaft spur gears shown white. So these are the spur gears. This is the gearbox output shaft. So whatever speed of this main shaft, which is given to the propeller shaft. Then what is what else is consisting the gearbox? Fixed gears, movable gears, idler gears, and clutch gear and the gear lever. So you can check this. So what is this? Gear selector. So we can slide this gear with the help of this gear selector. So independently slide the main shaft spur gear by manually applied force, by manually applied force. So you can check this, this is the gear lever. So we can either slide this gear by this bracket or it can slide with the help of this gear selector just by sliding the gear on this line the shaft. Okay, then we have seen this sliding mesh gear box, how it first gear is engaged, how second gear is engaged, how neutral position is provided. Okay, so these are the some of the advantages and disadvantages, so you can check. So simple in design, since only one gear, one gear pair is in mesh at one times, what is the meaning of this? So this is always in mesh and whatever required torque based on that we are going to mesh the combination like this or like this either this or this so it is having one pair of gears is in mesh at on one time its efficiency is more than the constant mesh gearbox. So it's a manufacturing easy. Manufacturing is easy as compared to the other gears. So that we are going to check. And what are the disadvantages? It has high gear and wear since more friction occurs. So this is the spur gears. These are the spur gears. So already we have seen in theory of machine, spur gear that straight teeth are in contact. So as compared to the other, that is helical gear, where 
inclined teeth are in contact so more wear and tear again because of sliding action so to get the required gear ratio this is slide so teeth at this place is going to slide on this here there is sliding between this and this so more wear will be there so again it requires more effort for the engagement so whatever effort required is more as compared to the constant mesh gearbox so again as compared to the constant mesh gearbox it is large in size so this is the these are the disadvantages so these are the applications so it is used in fiat with three speed manual transmission or in some of the mercedes and renault all in trade okay now next one is that is constant mesh gearbox screen is visible milin yes sir okay now first of all we are going to see the construction so this one is clutch shaft this is clutch shaft this one is lay shaft and this is the main shaft then with respect to the number of gears which are fixed which are movable so this is the counter shaft on which all these gears are rigidly connected on the shaft so once this gear is going to rotate this gear is going to have rotation and it will rotate whole shaft and all the gears are going to be rotated then gears on the main shaft these are going to rotate freely as bearing is provided so you can see here is no bearing is shown here bearing is shown bearing is shown bearing is shown so once clutch shaft gear is in mesh with the counter shaft all the gears on the counter counter shaft are going to rotate and these gears are in mesh with gears on the main shaft these gears are also going to rotate okay. so what you can say that this is the these are the gears which are fixed on the lay shaft once this gear is going to rotate shaft is going to rotate and all these gears are going to be rotated and now these gears are in mesh with gears on the main shaft which are free to rotate so these will also rotate but power is not going to transmit to this main shaft so one more additional element is provided here that is called as dock clutch that is called as a dock clutch so these dock clutches are rigidly splined to this not rigidly are splined to the main shaft which is splined shaft so when these dock clutches are going to rotate then main shaft is going to rotate now for example i will give one example so now the power flow will be like this you can check okay 
So now when clutch gear is going to rotate, just check out. This gear will be rotated, and because of that, this lay shaft is going to rotate. Accordingly, gears on the lay shaft are in mesh with the gear on the main shaft. These gears are also rotated, but power is not transmitted to this. Now, to transmit the power, whatever rotation of this clutch shaft that we want to transmit to the main shaft. So, for example, I will write here 500 RPM. Now, this will rotate with some RPM based on the ratio. All the gears on the lay shaft will rotate with the same RPM. These gears are in mesh with this. These gears are free to rotate on the main shaft. So, whatever number of teeth, whatever number of teeth in this combination accordingly, this will have a particular speed. This will have a particular speed. Now, I will write here 100 RPM. Here, I will write, for example, 80 RPM. A clutch gear, halia shaft cha, ha gear cha, mesh madhya hai. And he 80 RPM na firtai. So, this will rotate with 80 RPM. This will rotate with 80 RPM. And this will rotate with 80 RPM. So, glaze gear, lay shaft were mount ke lele. So, lay shaft just speed na firna rai. With the same speed, all these gears are going to have to rotate along with the lisha. Now, I will write, for example, this gear. So just I will write number one, two, then three, and here four. Million screen is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, one, two, three, and four. So one is in mesh with two, which rotates lay shaft. On the lay shaft, there is gear number three, which is in mesh with gear number four on the main shaft. Now, if three is rotating, this four is going to be rotated, but this main shaft is not going to rotate. This is not going to rotate. To rotate this, we need to have meshing between this dock clutch with the gear, with the gears. Once this dock clutch is in mesh with the gear on the main shaft, which is freely rotating. I'll just I will write here. This is 80 RPM. And for time being, you can consider this is rotating with 60 RPM. Again, this is rotating with 40 RPM. This is rotating with 30 RPM. So this is 80 RPM. This is rotating with 80 RPM. At the time, a little bit of gear. If we assume that the 60 RPM is rotated, it is 80 in the have 14 wheel because it is having double the size assumption and this is 80 this is going to rotate with 30 rpm just we have written some values to have understanding and all the gears on the lay shaft will rotate with the same speed and based on number of teeth on this gear and on this gear this will have a certain RPMs. So now clutch gear is in mesh with gear on the lay shaft and gears on the lay shaft are in mesh with gears on main shaft. Till power is not transmitted, only rotations are there. How to get power for the main shaft? For that, we need to have 
meshing between these two elements. Now, once this clutch gear is going to rotate, this will rotate, this will rotate, this will rotate. And if we are going to mesh this dog clutch with the gear, then this dog clutch is going to rotate and which is flying on the main shaft, therefore main shaft is going to rotate. So like this rotations or whatever RPM which are available. So just I will show. It is going to rotate. Some of like a, how to engage or how to transmit the power from plus shaft to the main shaft, Milin? Yes, sir. Okay. So, based on which combination, like how gear the mesh madai, ita meshing hai, ita meshing hai. So, what we want. Suppose we want top gear, that is top speed. Then this dock clutch is directly engaged with this. Once this dock clutch is going to rotate, this main shaft is going to rotate. Again, what will be the second case? If this gear, there is certain torque. Now we need to shift this dock clutch in this direction. And now this ratio will be transmitted and main shaft is going to be rotated. Now you can check this another image. Such mechanism. So here you can understand better how dog clutch is going to be work. This is the gear. It is freely rotating on the main shaft. This one is the dog clutch. Once the dog clutch is in engaged position with this gear, dog clutch is going to rotate with some speed and that speed is transmitted to the main shaft. So dock clutch is used to engage and disengage the gears on the main shaft for transmission of power. Understood function of dock clutch? Yes, sir. Okay. So, You can check out this mechanism. So this is main shaft. This one is dock clutch. Dock clutch rotated like a main shaft rotated. Dock clutch rotated on a sati. A dock clutch 
whatever cavity is provided inside the gear on the main shaft this should be engaged with this cavities then only power is transmitted okay should i proceed yes sir okay so i have added one of the disadvantage before uh, discussing the advantages so you can see this constant mesh gear box so all the times gear on is mesh so there is no crashing as we are observing in the synchro uh, as we are observing in the sliding so more quiet in operation so as gears on the main shaft are in mesh with the gears on the lay shaft we can use helical gears to construct such types of constant mesh gear box so because in case of the sliding mesh we need to slide so these gears are slide and there is sliding mesh or we can call it as a crash mesh so as gears needs to slide they they should be having straight teeth so where we are getting straight teeth in case of the spur gear so again what are the disadvantages of the spur gear so they will not transmit more power so more power or more power and that to quiet operation will be done with the help of the helical gears so in case of the constant mesh gear box we can use helical gear to transmit more power and that to be quiet in operation so that is the advantage of the constant mesh now one more one and that to be major disadvantage of constant mesh gear box is double declutching so we know what is clutch clutch means to grab to hold contact between flywheel and the friction plate that is the clutch plate with the help of the pressure plate now in case of constant mesh gear box as seen in this figure you can take one example that clutch gear is having speed of just i will give one example then you will able to understand what why double what is why double declutching is required now let us take example this is rotating with 100 rpm this will rotate with 50 rpm this will rotate with 50 rpm ek as shaft over hai this will rotate with 50 rpm and this will rotate with 50 rpm now now as per the combination and number of teeth on this gear and on this gear suppose this is going to rotate with 4 rpm another example and this is the main shaft on which this one is the dog clutch now this main shaft is connected to the propeller shaft and wheels are rotating at certain speed based on that in the reverse way this main shaft will have certain rotation now for time being if you are going to consider this dog clutch is rotating with 30 rpm 
and this is rotating with 40 rpm and dog clutch is rotating with 30 rpm as it is attached to the main shaft what you are observing there is difference in the speed and now if that is the difference so whatever difference just i will write on this here this is 30 rpm for dog clutch and here this is rotating with 40 rpm and this is rotating with 40 rpm so both rotating elements will have different speeds then how to mesh them so there is difficulty in meshing both the gears difficulty in meshing both the gears so this is 30 and this is 40 so to synchronize to make their speed equalize we need to have double declutching so basically it is required when the transmission is shifted from higher speed to the lower speed so just you can take example another uh, figures i will write this dock clutch is rotating with 100 rpm and it has a main shaft speed i that speed near dock clutch rotate hote and it has a gear i have a 80 rpm ni rotate hote ata he to aganche speed saman kele anantar as it a machine hona hai milin barabar hai ka ha kiwa don train hai so two trains running in the same direction one is with 100 kilometers per hour another is 80 kilometers per hour it is not suitable to jump from one train to the another train as there is difference in the speed and if the train a is running with 100 kilometers per hour train b is running with 100 kilometers per hour then passenger or whatever this is one example nobody should do like that a passenger can't jump from b to a or a passenger in a can jump from a to b why it is possible because both the strains are running with the same speed so to get speed equalized so we need to increase speed of this gear how to increase the speed of gear so first of all we are clutching we are accelerating the engine again clutch is released as engine is accelerated this clutch gear is going to rotate with high speed this will have some additional speed this will have whatever speed of this gear and additionally the speed of gear this gear which is mounted on the main shaft is going to be increased and ultimately speed of this blue gear is going to be increased so this is 100 and whatever speed of this 80 rpm it is increased to 100 rpm or somewhat less or more so that driver or the operator has to try to synchronize the speed to have smooth meshing to have smooth meshing between the dock clutch and the gear on the main shaft and that will allow smooth the transmission while shifting the gears so what is disadvantage of this so as there is difference in the in dog clutch speed and gear on the main shaft 
that synchronizing is required and how to provide the synchronizing by operating clutch once again and that is that's why first we are operating clutch that uh, declutching just by pressing the clutch pedal again engaging again releasing the clutch we are increasing the speed of the clutch shaft and again declutching and again we are trying to shift and with the second attempt there is smooth transmission while shifting from higher speed to the lower speed so two wheeler madhe bagitla asel tumhi ki top gear la hai bike chautya gear madhe ahe ani tumhi clutch press kela hai ani transmission tumcha third gear var kiwa second gear var tumhi ja vis operate karta tya vis कठ दिशा आवाज सो देर इज नो स्मूथ मेसिंग नो स्मूथ शिफ्टिंग ऑफ द गियर्स ऐवजी जर तुम्हें क्लच प्रेस कराएगा एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू एक्सलरेट क्लच प्रेस कराएगा दैट इज डी क्लच एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू एक्सलरेट द इंजिन स्पीड दैट अल्टिमेटली एक्सलरेट द स्पीड ऑफ द गियर ऑन द मेन शाफ्ट एंड now you can have smooth shifting of the gear from top to the next bottom that is chautya gear varun tumhala tu tisra gear var jar yaycha asel tar tya case madhe jar tumhi acceleration kela clutch press kela ani gear badalla tar there is no difficulty so you can experience the smooth shifting of the gear so that double declutching is required in case of the constant mesh gearbox so this is the disadvantage okay samajh laga milin yes sir okay then third type of the gearbox that is synchro mesh gearbox so first type we have seen sliding mesh gearbox this gearbox is having certain advantages with respect to the construction simple in construction but during the operation there is noise there is noise due to the crash mesh we are trying to mesh the gears just by sliding the gears on the main shaft again that drawback in the in the sliding mesh gearbox that has been eliminated by providing constant meshing between gears on the lay shaft and the gears on the main shaft so there is constant meshing and that was the alternative to overcome the crash mesh noise or the noisy operation in the sliding mesh again in case of the constant mesh what is drawback to have synchronization of the speed double declutching is required and double declutching will have to eliminate in case of the synchro mesh gearbox so that drawback of double clutching which will result in more consumption of fuel as we are declutching once as we are accelerating the engine speed that will consume more fuel and how to how to how to how to eliminate that drawback so we need to go for another type of gearbox and that is called as a synchro mesh gearbox so which will include constant mesh along with it will ensure proper engagement of 
the dog on the main shaft and gear on the main on the main shaft so it is a it is a gearbox in which the gears revolve at the same speed and accordingly we can get shift very smoothly so constant mesh improved version is nothing but the synchro mesh gearbox so whatever drawback of sliding mesh that has been overcome in the constant mesh and whatever drawback of the constant mesh along with the sliding mesh that is overcome in the synchro mesh gearbox so that we are going to see the remaining part of this synchro mesh gearbox during next lecture please wait i So I have taken screenshot. Now I can leave the meeting.